Hey guys, and welcome to my collection review for, oh god, what month is it? October already? Jeez, of uh, 2016. So here we have uh, my watch box, the first time it's ever made an appearance on this channel. Uh, I just got it, it's a brand new watch box. Um, it was really cheap, I think it was $15 on Amazon, there will be a link in the description down below if you want to uh, buy it. It's kind of crappy. I wouldn't actually buy it. I wouldn't recommend it, but there will be a link either way. So for this video, I'm actually going to switch up the camera angles uh, so you can get a much better view of these pieces as I go through them. So in just a second, I'll be right back and we will start going through my collection. All right guys, welcome back. We are going to be looking at all of the watches in my collection today. Uh, this is my collection for October 2016, as I said in the introduction. Uh, I'm going to start with the elephant in the room here. This, uh, this Hamilton here is actually not mine. Uh, it was sent to me by a subscriber. Again, thank you so much. Uh, this was sent to me for review. Uh, so this is the Hamilton Khaki Navy Scuba. Uh, it has a nice little uh, display back here. Let me get all the crud off of there. I hope you guys are able to see that pretty well. Uh, I'm not looking through the camera up there, so if you can't see it, I am sorry. Uh, let me know if you guys have any ideas on how to fix that. Definitely let me know too. Um, but this is a very interesting watch. Uh, it has some elements of a field watch, has the unidirectional rotating bezel of a dive watch which is actually kind of hard for me to turn. A nifty thing about this watch as well is that it has the day and the date complication, which is pretty nice. Um, not personally something that I am too attracted to, not uh, something that I would want in a watch necessarily, but uh, I am very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to review this. So I'm going to move on, uh, mostly because this isn't my watch and I don't have a lot to say about it. And also I don't want this video to be a million years long. So all of the other watches here I actually own. Uh, I will be selling a few and I will be uh, acquiring a few in the next uh, month or so. So uh, definitely be looking for that, but I'm also going to be getting uh, two more watches from subscribers to review, so you'll be seeing that on the channel here as well. So this next watch is the Tissot Powermatic 80. Uh, if you want to see a review for it, I'll leave a link uh, in the video, like right here or something. Um, but it has an 80 hour power reserve, which is really, really nice. Uh, again, I don't usually keep my watches wound, um, so it's way off. <laughs> But this is the only chronometer piece that I have. It's the only Tissot that I have and the only Tissot that I've actually uh, owned. So I don't know, it, it's a nice watch. Um, it has some nice dimensionality on the dial. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see that. Hopefully you will. Um, it's a nice piece, uh, but I do think I am going to part with it at some point in time in the near-ish future. Uh, and when I say nearish future, I probably will not have it uh, next year. So let me put this back on. All right, guys, so the next watch is kind of the, uh, the jewel Seiko of my collection. This is the Seiko Sarb 033. And uh, just like every other watch person on YouTube, uh, I really love this watch. It's a watch that has grown on me. If you look back at some of my older videos, um, I've, I've said uh, kind of negative things about it. I said that I like the Tissot more, um, and after really experiencing this piece and using it uh, in everyday life, I do actually like the Saab 033 uh, better. I did put it on a uh, other leather strap, so I think it looks nice. 38 millimeters, you can wear it pretty much in any occasion. It has a pretty bright loom, and this piece is actually fairly accurate. I think it gains like five and a third, or five third seconds uh, per day, so less than two seconds. It has a display back case, which shows off the 6R15C movement, which is pretty cool. 
uh, one of the reasons why I bought this watch, even though it's a dress watch and you're probably not going to look at it most of the time anyway, and uh, I'm just going to struggle while I try and put these watches back. Um, Alright, so let me move on <laughs> to the other Seiko Sarb in my collection. This is the Seiko Sarb 065. This is nicknamed the Cocktail Time. And uh, I was going to film another video with this watch. Um, I'm actually going to be comparing this watch with my Orient watch uh, on the channel here pretty soon. It'll probably be Monday's video. So definitely be looking out for that. And if you're new, subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, this is my most accurate watch in my, or my most accurate automatic watch. Let me be, uh, let me be clear. Um, but I don't know, I don't really like the design personally. I know a lot of people are going to give me flack for that. Um, but I am going to probably sell this watch soon as well. So the Tissot and this watch are probably going to go away pretty soon. Uh, one thing I do want to try out before I, I uh, give this away is to put this strap on this piece. Um, I also am kind of in the market for some new straps, so if you guys know a good strap company, let me know in the description down below. Uh, up next in my collection <laughs> is my only vintage piece. Uh, so this is, let me get it off of here. This is the uh, Omega Genève. Uh, this is actually from 1976. I bought it off of eBay. Uh, it wasn't passed down through my family, unfortunately. Uh, trust me, I would love to receive a watch uh, from my family, but unfortunately there are no other watchaholics uh, in my family. So this is from 1976. Uh, it's in pretty good condition. I've actually opened up the, the case back here, which has a few scratches. One of those scratches is from a, a younger and more naive Josh. Um, <laughs> But I don't know, I, I like this piece. Uh, I believe the dial has been repainted, but other than that, I think everything on here is, uh, is original. Uh, there are a few scratches on the side here. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see that. Hopefully you will. Hopefully my shaky hands will be steady enough for you to see that. Um, but it is a piece that I really do like. I, uh, I'm torn with this piece. I don't know if I'm going to sell it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I may keep it and have it refurbished by Omega if I ever have a thousand dollars lying around. <laughs> but uh, it, it does come with the original bracelet, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. This is a, a plated gold, just like the case, but the actual hands and the indices are um, not uh, plated gold. They're actually real gold. Um, so that is very interesting. I think the crown is also real gold. It's a slightly different color. Um, but again, I did buy this off of eBay. I think I paid about $300 for it. Uh, it's probably, this is probably only worth about $250, $200. And if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't buy this piece. Just because if you, you know, if you save a little bit more money, you could get a much better piece. So moving on, we have the, uh, <laughs> the only quartz watch in my collection. This is actually the first watch, uh, the first dress watch I ever bought, and also the first watch that I bought that cost more than $20 at Target. <laughs> so I believe this watch is about $80 to $50. It is the, uh, I, I mistook it for the Orient Bambino. I'm not entirely sure uh, exactly which watch this is, um, this was back before I knew anything about watches or even knew what an automatic watch was, um, but it works. <laughs> it's still working. Um, I am going to be comparing this watch to the Seiko uh, Saab 065 um, to kind of show you the difference between a really low-end watch. I think this watch, as I said, is about $50 and the Seiko, which is uh, a little bit less than $500. One thing that is kind of nice about this watch though is the, the leather strap is pretty nice given the, the price. Because for about $50, it's hard to get a nice leather strap. All right guys, sorry for all the sirens. Um, I'm doing my best, but you're probably gonna hear sirens uh, in, the, in the videos for the next few months. Uh, just a function of where I'm living. Uh, I'm, I'm living in Boston, kind of like in the city, so. Uh, yeah, the next watch here is a Hamilton. This was given to me on my 20th uh, birthday. 
it, it's a nice watch. Uh, I've actually, I think, compared this to the uh, Saab 065, so if you go back in my channel and kind of search around, uh, you'll be able to find that comparison. Interesting uh, little story with this piece, you'll notice this ding here, and there's actually a little, small, tiny nick on the crystal. Uh, when I was filming the comparison of these two watches, uh, I actually dropped this from a branch about six feet high, uh, straight face down, so the, the metal here is a little bit, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see that, but uh, it's a little dented and there's a little scratch on the crystal. A lot of people say that sapphire glass is like easy to, easy to uh, completely shatter, but I dropped this from six feet and it barely scratched the glass. So that was, uh, that was good. Um, here's the display case back. I, I do really like the Hamilton decoration on this rotor. Uh, it makes it feel a little bit nicer than the watch actually is. Um, and this is a pretty massive watch. I think this is 46 millimeters or something or uh, from, from case, the case width. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> so it is very, very massive for my wrist. But uh, I don't know, I, I like it. If I want to be flashy, this is kind of the watch that I wear because it is so big and the leather strap on this bad boy is just amazing. Uh, I'm not even, I, there's no real reason for me to change the strap on this because of how nice it is. So next I am going to move on to my Christopher Ward. Uh, if you guys are noticing that I'm not spending a whole lot of time on these watches, it's because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. Um, but we are at the last watch in my collection. Uh, this is pretty much my da daily wear. Uh, it's a watch that I really, really enjoy. I actually have to like stop myself from wearing it so I can see more watches and, and try those on. Uh, it just feels really solid on the wrist. I'm going to put it on here because I'm not wearing a watch yet. Um, but there's no display back on this bad boy. I don't know, it's just a watch that I personally really, really enjoy. And uh, that's kind of what watch collecting is all about. You know, you can listen to everybody on YouTube, but ultimately, like, if you really like a watch and somebody else tells you, oh, you're an idiot, uh, don't listen to that person. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. This has kind of been my collection review. Not much has changed since uh, last month, so I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the, de in the uh, comment section down below. I will definitely answer all of your questions. And uh, you know, that goes for, you know, if you have any questions about any of the watches that I talked about here, uh, I'll be sure to answer. So thank you for a watch -ing. My name has been Josh, or it is Josh, that's strange. <laughs> I'll see you next time, bye.